On this episode, we do a Q&A, but it was some financial fire yeah. out the gate, Daniel. Yeah, it was super wet. Lots of takeaways today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, do you, how do you follow that up, Trey? <laughs> our millions of listeners asked a lot of great questions, so you yeah. guys won't want to miss yeah. this one. Shout out to all the Roundtable listeners. Um, you know, we really appreciate support. Some great questions, financial training, business, all that shit. It's fire. Yeah, this is a great episode. Let's roll to it. Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy Corey G, at Small Alarms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. What's up, fellas? What's up, what's up? Yo. We got Q&A today, huh? Yes, sir. I put out a sticker question me and Trey did for all, right. all the millions of listeners we have. Yes. And uh, I think we got some great questions. There's a mix of, like, training, business, mindset, some stuff like Hell that. Yeah. So I think some very quality information that I think we can wrap on. All right, cool. Well. You run the show. You got the so, bomber glasses um, on, actually, kid. I actually like Trey's question so start um, there? Yeah, so let's start with Trey's question. Okay, so, good, right. Trey. Please, Trey. The first question is, the three best investment strategies or guidelines for beginners? Mm. Mm. Want me to start with it? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. So <clears throat> I like this because this is where a lot of the conversations sometimes start in the 4 a.m. crew or like in our building, right? Because a lot of you guys were young or younger. You've been here for a yeah. while now. But it's like where to start. And <clears throat> if I think back, to what Joe kind of hit me to, which by the way, Joe got clear to do the podcast and we'll bring him on soon, which would be awesome, okay. is I think if we're just talking stock market, at least initially, is understanding uh, the diversification of a couple different styles of stocks. Because a lot of people just think that, and this is, I'm gonna speak for myself, like when I was in the country thinking about stocks, to me it sounded, it felt like I was betting and I was gonna lose all my money because I didn't understand it, right? Because education is the power. And so then when I started to understand square one, dividend stocks, square two categories of stocks, whether it's, you know, a utilities or, you know, tech or like just to understand how it's segmented. So it's like, I would tell a new person, like understand the segments of where people invest their money, then understand a dividend and a growth stock. Because then I think if you, if you only have enough money for two stocks, We'll use Shopify and we'll use OKE, right? Those are two. Shopify's $30 today, which I think is a real good price. I don't know what it'll be when this comes out. That one doesn't pay a dividend, but you but they're saying the one year, uh, the one year target for that's 85. So you're hoping that'll grow $50 a share. Okay. Then the other 30, we'll say, we'll say the other one's $30 that pays a two dollar dividend. Well, this one, the target might be $40 this year but it's gonna pay you $3.75 of free money just because you own it. And if you understand those two things, then I believe as you're putting your money in, you can say, if I've got $1,000, I would like 500 to be quote unquote more secure and I know I'm gonna get paid on it and hope it grows incremental. And the other $500, maybe it could go up 30% because I'm in a growth area. I think those things are important. I think the third thing, I would teach is that it has to be uh, monthly, whether it's twenty five dollars or twenty five thousand dollars. It's mm -hmm. all relative. And here's the mistake I made, which I was hoping you guys would not make, which is why we've talked about these things. I didn't start early enough because I didn't think it was enough. That is the wrong. I'm telling you that is a huge mistake because even though I wouldn't have put away a ton of money, it still would have compounded to be way more money now because I would have been involved longer. So when you're saying, oh, I hear Corey talking about this or Cole talking about that, and, but I only got $75, I'm telling you, but if that $75 is going in every month for five years more, longer than when you can put 300, 500, 700 in, it's going to be huge for you long-term, especially if you're younger listening to this podcast. Yeah. So those are my three things, which that's kind of long-winded, but <laughs> that's where I would start. Yeah. Then I'm, I'll go right after that yeah. because... I started out learning about the dividend from you, just hearing a conversation about the compounding, stuff like that. Yep. The biggest thing I learned early from Joe was investing into the different types of accounts, yep. like how important it is the IRA. To, to invest into an IRA so that it, whenever you go to retire, it's tax-free, it gets pulled yes. out tax-free. And understanding why that's a benefit to me, even though I'll pay taxes on it now. But whenever I'm like 65 and there's a few mil in there, I don't want I, I don't want fucking like 40 percent of it to be fucking taxed yeah. whenever I'm about to retire. Which so understanding that early and then like going off you doing it monthly is whenever I started out, I adjusted my lifestyle to make sure I was 
like contributing the max amount I could per month yep. and then living off of that. So automatically having that deducted, not even thinking about it, just saying, I know I will never see this money and it's yeah. going into this account. Think about this. You create a bill, but you still have the money. Yeah. See, that's the difference is I think when people see it as like a bill, like as an overhead, and I even have told, told Rachel, like, I'm not spending that money. We still have it. It's just not in that account. It's yeah. just now invested in something else. So I think when people see like, almost like they create another car payment from the, for themselves, but you're creating a car payment essentially for something for your future that's going yeah. to be worth more in theory, that's, as long as you're not an idiot. That's kind of how I looked at yeah. it too. What'd you start with, Cole? Uh, so you can invest, I think it's like 500 per month. Yeah. So whenever I started first making like a decent amount of money, yeah. I would make sure that 500 was okay. like going out. That's, that's off, a significant like amount. Bat. That's good. So like I didn't even, I, I wouldn't even say I had that much money left after that with my yeah. taxes and stuff, yep. but I was like, I'm good. Like I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still in like college and shit. I can live off like, but like you said, whatever. you adjusted to that being part of your overhead because yeah. you, you, the long term is important. And that's, then that's really smart. And then you. anytime like I got more money, I would invest like in mm -hmm. basically On bump top. up, bump up the investment price. So you gotta be proud of yourself, dude. It's good. Yeah. So it's real good. All right. Anybody else want to work off that Trey? Yeah. Go. Um, <clears throat> so like to go off of that too, then, uh, I would say like, don't, it's like from a guideline standpoint, like don't invest like more than you can like afford to lose. So like yep. essentially like, like I like to look at it like, if I'm going to put like a thousand dollars in something, then like that thousand dollars is just gone. gone. Whether or not that thousand dollars doubles or just cuts or cuts even just a little bit though. But like, you just have to imagine that it's gone. And so like, because like the worst thing like is you don't want to like put your money like in a bet and then you realize that you need that money to pay a bill or you have an emergency come up or something like that. Because then what happens is like, like, let's say you put like a thousand dollars in something and that thousand dollars turns into let's just say hypothetically like eight hundred dollars, yep. and then you have to pull the eight hundred dollars out, and then that emergency ends up costing that emergency ended up costing you even more. Because, but like you don't, people don't realize you that. lost money on yeah, your investment. Yeah. But people too. don't like realize that. Though. So like I would say like that, and then as well as like I've been telling like a lot of people this like um, I've actually been having like a lot of people message me on Twitter about option trading. Yeah. I've seen that on some of your yeah. feed today. Yeah, and um, like I always tell people like finding like just the trade just finding like the style that works like for you because like one thing that like a lot of people i think mistake like investing is that like everyone's situation is like different so like even taking like financial advice from like other people like you have to be conscious of those things because to one person like losing a thousand dollars might not seem like anything but to you like that could like ruin like that like your finances yeah. for like that month or something yeah. like that you know so like you have to be like conscious of like just like those like kind of things and figure out like what works for like what works for you too like in the first place even because like some people like when it comes to like trading like some people might like see like 10% or 20% profit and be okay with like taking their profit and taking their money and finding something else mm. but some people like might want to wait that out longer though and like go for like that like 50% though mm -hmm. and like so you just have to figure out like what works the best for you though like Where's your from, appetite? A, from, yeah. from like a trade from but like from like a trading like psychology like standpoint mm -hmm. what works for yeah. you because like the trading psychology that's the whole that's the biggest aspect of trading because like you have to be because like you're literally watching your money tick up and down uh, like yeah. there's nothing like more like like from like an emotional standpoint like yeah. there's nothing more that could fuck with your brain in my opinion than like something the, like that like literally watching your money tick the up detachment or down. of it is a huge key yeah so i didn't do that early because but what i had to when i first started with joe i was doing the sep ira because of a whole tax situation that's what got me into it right that i was like obviously planning for my future at the same time as like limiting my tax burden you know mm -hmm. by the law or whatever with the ira this, it's called a SEP IRA and the detachment knowing I couldn't take it out. So I only did that type of investing because I just knew that was like the minimum I had to do for my situation. Then I started realizing I can't touch this shit till I'm 59. I'm probably, I'm probably will be doing some type of work just with content and stuff. But the reality is I'm probably not going to be like actually working all day at 59. I don't think, I think yeah. I'm going to be playing golf. That's my plan. But anyway, who knows? Play this back when I'm 59. <laughs> but my point is that I was like, well, shit, I better start putting some money away. I can touch whenever I want it, but I still had that, but I already had that mentality of once it's gone, I'm not taking it back out. And so I think to your point, Trey, it's all relative, 
But like when I look at what's in my actual bank account, I don't think, oh, I can access that. To me, I'm not taking, because the long game is keeping it in, right? Now, if obviously there's a fucking super rainy thunderstorm day, I can grab it if I need it. But when it leaves my actual bank account and goes into my investment account, it doesn't exist for yeah, me it's anymore. Gone. It's gone. <laughs> and whether it goes up, down, or sideways, it's just out of there. And I think that's a great point to know, like, you know what? You wanted to put 1000 in because you heard Cole talk about 500 but what you probably should put 220 in because then you yeah. know you don't have to take it back out. Yeah. And then if something happens, you still have 800. So I think that's, that's good advice, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Danny. Yeah. Go. Uh, I mean, not to beat a dead horse, uh, beat a dead horse, but like it's pretty much, pretty much similar for me, I guess with the IRA, but then anything above that, like, a, like I have like another like low cost index fund mm -hmm. that I'll contribute to, but then like a Vanguard type thing. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's what it is. And it's just automatic. Like literally you just learn how to live w with what you're, mm -hmm. you know, using each month or whatever. So, and then the only other thing I wanted to contribute to with it is like, just with like, I, I just think of like personal credit card debt and sh stupid yeah. shit like that. Like all that consumer debt of buying like, you know, furniture, clothes, whatever, all that unnecessary stuff. And so like right now, we don't really talk about that stuff, but none of us really spend that way. No, yeah, no, I, I don't either. But like right now, great this, topic, th this point in time, like for example, I mean, we just got a new house, mm -hmm. but like that was not going to happen until these five boxes were checked. Like yeah. it wasn't even a conversation like from the down payment to like the stuff that we needed to buy mm -hmm. inside because I'm like, you keep see, I mean, you always see like, Oh, you can, you know, split this up into payments or like it's 12 months, same as cash. I'm like, F fuck all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, I'd rather just cut it, you know, free. That's and just clear. That's being it. financially disciplined, Danny, yeah. which yeah. is how you, you live your life in a disciplined manner. So that makes sense. Yeah. So that's my only other thing. If it's not, that, how do you don't spend it? What's your advice on resisting that though? I fell into that a long time ago, but it's I haven't, easy. I haven't operated that way. It's easy for you. That's kind of my point. So no, like, it's easy to yeah, fall okay. into it. Yeah. yeah. Just because I mean, you see that that monthly payment and then mm -hmm. like but you're always going to be paying on something there's always going to be the yeah. next thing and the next thing and the next thing so i always just siphon off like you know whatever you can manage that month and then like guess what you're not going to buy mm -hmm. x object until you it's in that account that, sure. that's it's as simple as that for me that's probably something i take for granted is that we don't even talk about this but this is a major fucking topic but none of us spend that way mm -hmm. Which is a huge plus, by the way, guys. Yeah. Probably more than we realize. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I guess it's because maybe just like the <laughs> other type of disciplinary, like spending things we talk about, maybe that just over all these years, it's over, it overrides just wanting know to. it's going to put you like in a bad spot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's just education about <laughs> yeah, it. Well, so and that's why, why would I do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's where it came from for yeah. me. Because yeah. I, knew, I knew exactly how it felt. And it felt like you were you like it felt like you were digging yourself in a hole and you couldn't stop fucking digging. Yeah. So first is like stop digging, <laughs> and then like you start to climb your way out mm. slowly and slowly. And by the way, when you climb out of the hole, that's where the freedom is at. Exactly. A lot of people yeah. think being rich is having a million bucks. Being rich is that you are wealthy. Freedom is that you spend X and you have X coming in, and then as you your time gets more efficient and you make more money, like. I don't, it's an equation of time spent, money in, freedom. money spent. That That's really what creates the freedom. For sure. And, and to me, that is the thing, the mo like there's never been a number that has been sweeter than the feeling of being able to do whatever you want. Yeah. Like it's not a number. Yeah. And I would argue that the number isn't a million. It could be a hundred thousand for some people. It could be 50,000 if you really live in off the grid. But the reality is, when my life really changed, I made a little over 200 for a couple years in a row and wasn't an idiot with my money. And that changed my life forever. And I think maybe because the way I grew up with like nothing, that seemed like a bazillion dollars to me. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I did some dumb shit and bought some shit I probably shouldn't have, which is part of the point where I learned from that. But the reality was, is that I think when some people think I got to be a millionaire, I'm going to do this. I got to do that's awesome. But the reality is that's not what changes it. I think it's, not as far away as you think it is. Mm -hmm. Now that might feel light years for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I think once you start getting around that six figure level, you got to say like, Hmm, like <laughs> I'm about halfway to where this shit's real different. But if you guys are single, you live below your means, you're smart about your money. 
a hundred can make a huge difference in your life if you know what the fuck you're doing. Mm -hmm. So my, my point is, is that you can dramatically change your long-term situation in your short-term situation by having these little bit like this little bit of discipline around some decent money. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm like addicted to investing. Like I, I if too. I had some extra cash like I laying around, instead of like looking at like what new pair of shoes do I want, I'm like what new fucking stock do I want to buy or something way. like that. You know that when my money hits my account, it's yeah. the next day it's already in something. Yeah. <laughs> I have L such a bad issue. With yeah, same. <laughs> Literally, same. <laughs> Literally the next day yeah. because of me and Rachel just talked about this the other day. She's like, maybe you should wait like an extra day. Yeah. Just I'm so like to, we I'm talk. Going to the bank after this. Yeah, yeah. It's like so. <laughs> that's my thing. Is like I try to make sure it's employed. The money is employed and working for me as fast as possible. Yeah, so, I'm all about like fucking stacking assets, especially right like right now. Like right now is a great time to fucking stack some assets. Yeah, all money in, no money out. Yeah, facts. Big 100, time. Hundred percent. Yeah. I like it. Um, all right, cool. Next question. That was good. Well. One more thing on Go this. Ahead. I think once you dial in the basics of understanding dividends, stuff like that, understanding the accounts, understanding are you a day trader versus like long term, like what style suits you. I think getting into like understanding the charts yeah. is probably a huge thing. Like even just understanding like basic indicators like the RSI or anything like that. Like what do you think, Trey? Yeah, I mean. I don't even understand that shit. AG does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That, yeah. I just like that's just like typical like shit I think like people like anybody should understand because yep. like for example like I just like, what does RSI mean the relative <laughs> strength index okay yeah. it basically so, like, un yeah like well because like, I don't invest this way so that's why I'm like asking, understanding yeah. like all that stuff for like even like just how charts move and everything mm -hmm. like even from like people like people should be conscious of that stuff even from like a long-term yeah. standpoint just because like it could be something where like you might buy it like you might buy something one month and like you don't and like you're cool with holding it for like five years sure but like if you look at the chart though and like you know like if you just wait a couple more months and then you can get it even cheaper you can get yes. it even cheaper like yep. you mean like that's that's just like type of shit that people need to be conscious of you need like, to teach me that Trey. yeah which we will all right i, like I think it. the other part too with like going off of this like at a more probably basic level is just the financial education part like we've mentioned like rich dad poor dad the cash flow Huge. quadrant there's i will teach you to rich there's tony robbins has some good stuff too mm -hmm. just like Developing an understanding there will be super helpful. Well, and bug the fuck out of your local financial advisor. That's their fucking job. Yeah, find one. Teach me. Yeah. yeah. Teach me that what a fucking Roth IRA, a regular IRA, a SEP IRA. Like, teach me the difference. That's what Joe did. Because I didn't fucking know. Yep. That's what their fucking job is. They make a percentage of your money as they're running it, but their job is to fucking teach you. And every time that money goes in, you could have the say where it goes. You do enough research, like... You know, Cole's on automatic debit for 500,000 bucks. He could tell his financial guy when that hits, I'm going to call you and I want to go over with you where it goes. A lot of times they just do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Some people want that. That's not what I want. I don't have the automatic because I'm going to go as much as I can put in the day after it fucking hits. <laughs> and I want to have some say in it. Now, yeah. what I love about Joe is, fuck, you got to talk me off the ledge sometimes, yes. which is good because I need a partner like that that has some reasonable thoughts back at my craziness. So that to me is worth the percentage of having a financial advisor because long term, I'm probably going to make less dumb decisions. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like being with Joe too is because if I wanted to, I could do it myself. For sure. But I like having the other person. I know that if I go to Joe and I say I want to do this, I need, he'll ask me why yeah. or like, like he'll ask me more questions and I have to basically prove why I'm doing it. And yep. that's also to him, but also it's in my brain yeah. and this is why I want to do it. I like so it's that. like a, like a devil's advocate. So I don't fucking just keep selling shit. Well, cause I put together a strategy for, um, an account to make X amount in dividends over the next like two years that I'm working towards. And he was like, he looked at the four stocks I really wanted to buy, which not financial advice. So I'm just going to not share them. But <laughs> the, uh, he said, he came back to me and said, you need to be in a different category with part of this money and look at this one. And so then I went in the, that one was called a man, man life or man, you life corp. It's like a financial instrument, financial company, but it pays a dollar dividend and it's uh it was like $17 a share, but they've been paying the dividend since 2000. So it's like, but I didn't have a financial company like an Edward Jones. That was like, I didn't have one or own one of those. And so he was like, you know, you're, I'm always the oil and all that stuff, but, uh, or MO or whatever, but he's like, you need to have a diverse 
diversification on this asset there. And I was like, all right, cool. So if not, I'd be all in the same fucking stuff, paying the highest ones. So that right there, just alone, like help, help me just change the, you know, I guess strategy a little bit. That was some banger shit right there. That was yeah, some good it was really good. Info. It was really good. Um, all right. So kind of going off the business, um, biggest fuck up you've ever had in business and how did you bounce back? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I've fucked so, up a lot of stuff before. I'm trying to think how I bounced Yeah. So I mean, whenever flow, I was thinking about this, rider. I was yeah, thinking like. My favorite ones. What, which one? Like flow, flow rider. Flow rider. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. See, see, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. Go ahead. Just tell a story. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't really think of anything major. It was just like small stuff that's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, wasn't that big of a fuck up because I think most of the time I handle my shit and I make sure that yeah. there are no fuck ups. Sure. Or, okay, well, I'll, I think, I'll start quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Trey. It's never a big fuck up, but every time I like wake up late in the morning, <laughs> I always it's, it's still a fuck up. Yeah, it still it feels like the like the worst thing yet, like ever. <laughs> you miss well, but also you do that maybe what twice a year. Yeah, but it, that's like the literally the worst. That's like the worst feeling though. Like I like yeah, I've, yeah, I've, like ever have to start the day. <laughs> I think there was one of them that where it was like it was like hours later too, right? Like we got a hold of you as like eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing. I think that my biggest, uh, there's a ton. First off, you are going to fuck up little things to major things all the time. It's just what it is. So people thinking that things, even when shit's going well, I think some of it's fucked up. I think Mm -hmm. it's just the way that I think all the time. Like I'm always trying to relook at stuff and think like, even if it's going well, am I missing something? Like, I, I just think that that's always a process. Because you have to be evolving, growing. Not everything's always raising up. It goes down, it goes up, it's whatever. The The one thing was that also, when you get a lot of wins in a row, you think they're all wins because you think you're sweet. So Robert De Niro said something the other day when I was watching an interview where he said, when shit's going like shitty, just realize there's an end to it. You don't know when, but there is. And when shit's rolling, like fucking you're killing it, don't be feeling yourself too much because yeah. there's an end to that too. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I thought that was interesting. What she's saying is, is be in the middle, right? And so, yo, I get, uh, what fucking Mike Vick, Ocho Cinco coming off Joey Porter, Sean Merriman. Uh, who was the next one? Like I had athlete, athlete, athlete killing it. Tiger Arnold. Kaepernick. And I'm like yeah. Kaepernick, you know, I'm like, yo, flow rider. I'm I'm the one standing up in the meeting. <laughs> Flow fucking rider. Yeah. He's got this many million. He's jacked. Blah, blah, he blah. He was hitting that time, too. Hitting, dude. Yeah. Welcome to my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Splice, that might be a good clip. Splice yeah. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to his point, Flow rider was awesome. He was great. Yeah. No problems. The deal's multi, like, not multi-million hundreds of thousands of dollars like it's he was a fucking star he is a star mainstream i'm thinking the workouts will go out just like they go on everyone else's stuff it's gonna kill it people are gonna engage no and i got so he had a photographer that he worked with he did his photo shoot all the stuff when's the last time i think I, you guys know this but yeah. i'm gonna retell the story because it's new content when's the last time you saw flow ride without sunglasses on Never. <laughs> Literally never. I would n- never would have known. Okay. So he does the whole photo shoot. He's jacked. No sunglasses. Not a motherfucker knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Can, can so you, you said, so, I mean, he's an athlete, bro. Yeah, jacked yeah. up, big. But he sends all the stuff and it looks great. But not one picture looked like his brand. Yeah. So to me, it was like. We probably should have had him doing fucking curls and like a cutoff with his glasses. And like, I don't know. Like, we just did not think of that through at all. Yeah. Plus, I'm thinking like, of course he doesn't work out in his sunglasses. That's like his stage thing. But literally, it looked like a completely different dude. So I get all this and I'm putting, I'm trying to wrap the same content, the same way that you guys all consumed that murdered it. Fucking crickets. First post goes out. We announce it. Zero engagement. Like seven people fucking commented. They're like the fuck is that you know like whatever and it just like week after week it was just awful so then it comes to the quarterly meeting where you know they're like 
So how's that going? And I'm like, I just stand up. I'm like, this fucking, no problems with Flow Rider. He's an awesome guy. Did everything we asked. Continues to do everything we asked. Sucks ass. Just doesn't work. Was, <laughs> no, I'm so, like six and one, bro. Was, yeah. Like, it was so bad. Was everything like, you know, you're like, oh yeah, Flo, like he, or yeah, he's doing the photo shoot. Everything is good. And it was like a, it hit you right whenever you got like the drive link that had all the photos in it. Yes. But I would also, I would also assume like he would have the sunglasses on, but it makes sense that he doesn't work out with sunglasses. No, but you would, of course. And I would probably, ask him it, to do yeah, that. That's probably a thing like, <laughs> Hey, like a like a deliverable. Make sure you wear the sunglasses. Like probably the last he thing just, you think about putting it on. He just looked like Flow Rider working out. But yeah. if you don't really pay attention to Flow Rider, you're just so used to seeing certain things he's got on, how he yeah. operates, and so like it. And even on his page, so it wasn't just like our people didn't know Flow Rider. When he posted it out, it looked awkward on his shit, like yeah. on his Facebook and everything. And once again, it just the engagement was terrible. It didn't work, and I just looked like a fucking idiot. But <laughs> I tried to get 50. I was close to getting 50. I was working on, uh, actually, true story. I was negotiating with 50's manager and he committed suicide. You can oh, look it up. Shit. And then there goes that. I mean, so fuck, I couldn't go any further with that. Um, and then I tried a couple other ways, but it just didn't work. I was thinking about Lil Wayne, but he was really only talking about drugs at that point. And then, um, so third was Flo Rida. Thinking back, was there Which any also means Florida, right? Was yeah. Was there anyone else who <laughs> was there anyone else at the time like thinking back like oh I should went after like this person? No, like, fifty would have been the best, but I would have had to give up like heavy amount for fifty, right? Because fifty especially was at that time. Yeah, yeah. Cause fifty was in the industry. Like he was at the Arnold one year. That's how I got my G unit sneaker signed. Like he was around and he was friends with the guy from Europa who I'm tight with. Uh shout out Eric Hillman, no free shout outs. But he was like so I had it into him. That's how I got the manager. We were going back and forth. And to me, we were trying to be vitamin water before vitamin water. You know what I mean? That's what, that was my mentality. I'm trying to get everybody hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I got fucking Tiger. I got fucking Arnold. I'm trying to get 50. I believed I could get anybody. And I could. Flo Rider wasn't it, though. <laughs> so, anyway, that was a royal fuck Tried. up. Yeah. Um, there's some other things, though. Here's the one thing I'll tell you. When it costs you money, though, that's when you learn the most. I had fuck ups on paperwork that cost me money, which you guys are aware of. I've had fuck up with old business partners that's cost me money. I've had fuck ups on a lot of stuff that has cost me Corey Gregory, not the company money. And when you have to write those checks, which ain't five hundred dollars, by the way, there are thousands or a hundred thousand plus, whatever it is, that really is the best teacher. Honestly, when I fucking started make making Kyle pay me every time he was late, that's when he got better. I karate chopped the desk at old school. I scream out of my fucking, and I start saying, no, it costs you a hundred dollars now. Cause then what's he going to say? Well, no, I'm not paying you. I say, well, you're fucking fired. It costs you a hundred dollars. If you're late, that's when he started coming on time. And then he moved into Cole's house to be even closer. So he knows he's on time and he's done really great since then. Mm -hmm. So he had that thousand dollars bound up in his pocket. He gave me about 400 back. And every time he'd give it to me, I say, thank you for paying for dinner tonight. This is amazing. <laughs> and, but I think, <laughs> It was the best lesson. <laughs> so my man, I wish you guys could see him off camera shaking his head. But the reality is when it costs you money, your own money out of your savings account and your checking account, I have learned the best lessons then. Shout out, Kyle. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> That's you guys have any have anything you want to add to that? The the only story I could think of, and this wasn't like really major, but it was kind of like a fucking wow factor that I didn't like catch this, mm -hmm. was whenever we did, uh, fuck, what? It was like the summer max on the sax. Okay. And yes. somehow, so whenever I, <laughs> I made- I remember this one. Yeah, so whenever I made the summer max- With the thing, beer thing. With the beer thing, it was originally- the caffeine and kilos, kilos. max collab yep. with the coffee mug. So it was the same thing. And I basically changed it to look like a beer mug and the fucking logo was still in the illustrator files. And yes. somehow whenever I submitted it, the logo was ticked on. So it was actually on top. So you could see it wasn't like in the background, yep. just hiding in the layers. It was on there and we submitted it fucking approved it looked good like me and Ty looked at it like yeah this looks fine and then it comes and it has the fucking caffeine and kilos logo just right on the fucking <laughs> big as fuck on the beer can and I'm like 
Oh, times I mean, like times like a thousand or two thousand sacks. Yeah, it was like two thousand. Yeah, two thousand sacks. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck? But but in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't. That's not that no. big of a fuck up. And I don't think anyone noticed it. Well, no, because it it didn't print super crisp. Yeah, it remember? didn't. Yeah, so it's kind of like, oh, what is it going but, on? But but well, that's a good example of all, another thing. Coming back to when I've had talks with Kyle about this, is that cold ninety nine point nine percent of the time you absolutely murder it. Yeah. So the point one time you don't, or the one time that Trey sleeps in, it just, dude, I fuck up stuff more than you guys fuck up stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? So to me, it just comes down to if you over deliver and deliver back to the Andrew Carnegie thing, it's like, don't do just as you're told, not me telling or just what's required. You do more. And if you just do incrementally more, then you're always going to be fucking good when you do fuck up stuff because everyone does. It's just what it is. Yeah. And so like my flow rider fuck up. I was like, yo, I'm six and one. The other yeah. ones crushed it. I'm the one that's got the relationships with all these people. Like some of those deals might've been done earlier without me, but the reason why they went so well was I think a lot because of me. So I don't feel bad about that one. You know what I mean? Now, if I was paying out of my own pocket, I would have felt a little different probably, which is why I brought that up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in the reality that was still out of the company's pocket and I felt really bad cause it didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't work, but mm -hmm. anyway. Good point, though. But yeah, I remember that. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. What? The Captain and Kilo's beer mug. Anything for you, Dan? I, the only thing I could think of was the very first day. I was going to bring this up. Fitness, this is amazing. I just forgot to do. You just forgot to put we the literally, stuff on. We literally <laughs> talked about it the night before. The night before and I was I, like, Danny, you're not in your real job anymore. You got this. You work for, you're work. you full time for me. Just have this up by a certain time. First day. Whoosh, what, what would you, and what, what, so what'd you end up doing? Shit in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did I call you and ask where it was at? Oh yeah, you were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I got like throat punched yeah. and kicked in the stomach at once. <laughs> Great first day. I'm yeah. like, hey Danny, you want to put the stuff up? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was looking for train tracks out there. <laughs> oh, Danny's always like, yeah, I hope you fall down the stairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. True story. It's fucking good. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. You were like, yeah. Because you were like, yeah, it's the first day. I don't know. I don't, you just basically, it wasn't on your, it wasn't really in your fucking mind yet. Yeah, no. That's so good. All but, right, Cole. Hey, yeah. it didn't happen again. No, I don't think you've ever done that again, yeah, which is amazing. <laughs> what, well, how many years later? Yeah, fucking five plus. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, the the rest of them are like basically some training questions. So All right, cool. So we'll get into shit. All right, uh, Taj Grills, shout out Taj Grills. What up, Taj? Uh, what's the best way to get back on track for training at, like if you fall off? I think um, the most recent, the 21 days to Yoke City, was a great indicator uh, that we need more training programs like that to get people back on track. Now, that program had three different levels. It's still difficult. But 21 days to create a habit, which is why I did the busy diet back in the day for 21 days, right? That was the whole thought around it. Something that's a short enough window where you feel like you can attain it. This one specifically, which is the 21 days to Yoke City, are things you don't really need equipment for. And you just need to be consistent at something. And when you string a few days together, you will create mild momentum, which will make you feel better, which then will make you realize, oh, I can jump the dumbbell shred, I can jump, get stacked, whatever it is. You need to find an entry point of something to do for 14 to 21 days. In my opinion, that is the best way to get back on track and get on some material that sharpens the mind a little bit it's easy to get foggy if you eat bad you're not training and maybe you got something else going on in your life the fog can be real mm -hmm. if you start eating halfway decent you start lunging you start training and you start listening to some good material you can sharpen up it, it'll take a few days but you can sharpen up a little bit and start thinking more clearly yeah i mean pretty much echoing that you just have to find what it is for you it could be Yolk City, it could be lunges, whatever yeah. it is. Just create a little bit of uh, momentum so you can get started again. Yeah. It could be fucking uh, be Tony fucking Horton, walking. fucking whatever the hell that shit is. Uh, what the hell is that? Um, we don't, uh, there's that one fucking, uh, I can't remember the workout plan everyone does in their base. Not Tybo, some other shit like that. It could be some, it could be your grandma. P90X? Yes. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be your grandma's, <laughs> you could be your grandma's fucking workout P90X. Like, like, where's he going? Yeah. Like? Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm never going to, I'm never going to shout, no free shout. I'm never going to shout out free, other free programs or other programs. But the reality is like, you need to do something. Yeah. You need to fucking do something. Well, I mean, Even if you fucking walk for 20 days. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, I think of like James Clear when he talks about like, just like when you start a habit, like you're 
trying to make an identity change. Like you want to be mm. the per- kind of person that's going to go for you know a half hour walk, or the person Ooh, like kind that. of person who lunges, or the kind of person who wants to be fucking shredded. I feel like that might be a daily so, fire. I'm going to oh, take yeah, a note yeah, of that. Nice. Be so, that person. Shout out. Yeah, I like that. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna read yeah, it. That'd be sick if we got James on. James clear on here. Yeah, we can get that. We're gonna talk to talk to Deegan about him. Yeah, he knows him pretty well. Yeah. Uh, next. He's like six twelve too. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a fucking boss too. Six <laughs> twelve. <laughs> Sorry. Danny's uh, wiener's one twelve. Oh. <laughs> Good one. All right. <laughs> I should have said one uh, negative 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Math was your strong suit. Hey, oh, yeah. I got to tell this story real quick. So, uh, AG the other night was fucking just spinning the fuck out of the ball. It struck out this kid on a nasty fucking um, a slider or something. The fucking center fielder, which will remain nameless, but he's fucking <laughs> chirping the whole time. He runs in. You can hear him say, he's like, dude, that was so nasty. It's like. I got a fucking turtle head. <laughs> <laughs> but you can hear him in the yeah. stands. So yeah. the whip, so all the moms are like, <laughs> I'm assuming that's what he meant. Oh so God. yeah, that was, I was fucking dying. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Cool. Good yeah. All right. Got I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> Say that a little less loud. Anyway. Got the, the homie Kevin Esteban. Been a member since uh, 2017. Hell yeah. Been lunging, been getting it. He said, uh, he wants to know rest versus gains. He goes, I struggle with how Arnold said at OSG that he loved being a little overtrained. Yeah, why? Uh, Arnold believed that that kept him in condition, though. So when he when he mentioned that, he meant he thought that if he trained more with the supersets three times a week, all that kind of stuff that he did that was wild, that it kept him in better condition. Because Arnold's knock when he first got here was he wasn't tight. Mm-hmm. He was bigger than everybody. But he wasn't tight, so he got beat by Frank Zane. He got beat by some of these guys that did more reps, more conditioning, whatever. Because none of those guys really did cardio. They would like maybe like run on the beach a little bit, but they really didn't. They just trained. So you got to remember, <clears throat> those days weren't, oh, I did this, and then I did 30 minutes of steady state, or I lunged. They didn't do any of that stuff. They got that condition by eating and by training that volume. So when he said he liked to be a little overtrained, I really think he meant – that kept him in that condition that he needed for, because he obviously wasn't flat. So it's like... He was not small. Yeah. <laughs> but what I think he also meant by that, because we had talked about this multiple times, people just don't fucking push hard enough. For you to push to an amount, like I've tested this, by the way, probably more than fucking anybody, to push it to the amount that you are actually overtrained, take some motherfucking will. Like... You got to really fucking push yourself. So like maybe if you're a complete novice and you go try to do 800 meters every day, you're going to get punched in the fucking throat. But the reality is if you work out and you're really that concerned about overtraining, like, I don't know. Like, I just think that probably nine out of 10 people or maybe 9.9 out of 10 people don't even get there, Mm -hmm. but they're so worried that they're going to get there that they're actually undertrained. And a lot of people will say, you're not really overtrained, you're undernourished. Mm. And that could be part of it too. So like you're overtrained, but you're not really doing the other shit right. You're not eating enough protein or just quality food in general or getting enough rest, not taking your aminos. Like there's so many other factors. And that's why I battle this because I'm like, I have I didn't even figure out the squat every day shit till I was 37. You know what I mean? Like most people were fucking pretty much packing it in at that point. I'm just starting this crazy shit. Or 35. Like, I was older already. So if I would have been overtrained, I would have figured it out then. But guess what? I was sleeping like a quality five or six. I'm getting my aminos in every day. I'm getting my creatine in. I'm eating quality food. Like, I would just rival that if you're doing the other things proper, you shouldn't even be fucking worried about that. Unless you're fucking David fucking Goggins. Yeah. 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 So (laughs) Right? Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, it'd be really hard to get there. And I know everyone's a little different. I get that. I mean, Cole, you, you, I would say it's accurate that you recover not as well as some of the other guys. Yeah. I, it's just <clears> what it is. I like, I'm like the type of person I can like, I can run off like four or five hours of sleep for like a few days in a row, but then I, I need more rest Yeah, just with like, and cause I'm trying to like basically make, keep my body healthy, like my shoulder issue, my hips, the more rest I get, the better it feels obviously. So like, I like, 
I like battle that of whether or not am I being like a pussy or do I actually like need rest? Yeah. Like I, but you're literally maybe one of the only, there might be one other guy in the crew that battles it. Like you, like most of the people I've met, it is, they never push themselves hard enough to be at that. Yeah. But yours is like, you're pushing yourself there and you're trying to manage some stuff. So, but yeah. I just think like, I just think most people well, don't get there. I think everyone needs to be their own science experiment too <clears throat> yes. with this because like with being like, when I go through my like different iterations with training, like when I was training for like my like long ass ruck shit, mm -hmm. like that was completely different. So like I knew I had to do X, Y, and Z, like basically regardless on how I felt or not. So I knew when I was finally getting to that point because yeah. everything else was in line that you just said. Yeah. Like, nutrition like then know. if you're not recovering on top of then, it then you're like oh yeah. i might be here exactly then you can like change the variable slightly so that mm. you can actually recover yeah whether it's a rest day or just like t you know david Goggins talks about this still running but like yeah. running really really slow or like yeah. whatever it is i mean but cool if you're like banging 21 days in a row then you need more recovery yeah i mean Pound facts palace. you know sometimes you gotta like recharge a little bit you know all right next question um all right here hold on let's see <laughs> Just throw that in there. So yeah, we we, we kind of just we kind of just talked about this on the last episode, but competition mindset leading up during and after event. Maybe since we just talked about during, what's the mindset after the event? Mm. I got I got problems with this because like when I got a date, I'm turned up every week on Wednesday. Ever since the meet, I've had a hard time figuring it out where I stop, what wh how hard I should be pushing. The yeah. wheels just kind of partially fell off this week. I think part of it is because of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but am I supposed to be 1 million constantly? That's impossible. Cause it's, so it's like uh, me managing that. So I, I know exactly what to do when it's on. I'm the yeah. fucking love that. Like, yeah, fucking let's take it. Wrap me up every fucking week. I'm battling. And that's where I feel the most at home. I think cause I've been doing it for so fucking long. It's almost like any other athlete. I've been going at competition literally since Barnesville High School, 1997, every fucking quarter, bro. So, like, that's where I feel at home at. I feel at home with stuff on a calendar, being on display, and having to push. I don't really know how to shut it down. And I'm having a little problems with that because I'm trying <laughs> trying to balance it a little bit, but it, it's it's really hard for me. So yeah. I, maybe you guys got better answers for this one. <laughs> I, so with like football and sports in high school, there was always like a three month period of like an off season. Mm. So it's, it's really interesting because now I feel like I'm in the same groove of where in high school you would have all winter as basically an off season, like a three to four month off season then would lead up into the competition where, you know, you're training for fucking every Friday night, every yeah. big game, whatever like that. Now it's like, it's kind of switched of where with our lifestyle and our competition, it seems like we all focus in around the fall and winter because obviously that's whenever, what what else is there really do? Yeah. Like gain phase. Yeah. And then in the summer, you kind of like line it off a little bit so that, you know, it's, you want to go to the fucking pool, vacation, stuff like that. So for me, it's like, I'm kind of itching to go back into the winter. I know in the winter, will we fucking be at it and going hard again, but yeah. just like kind of trying to take it off and just like fucking work out, get a pump, just be a bro. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I just don't do very good at it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I have been thinking like I, I need another calendar. Like I need, right. I need, I need a date now. Yeah. Cause I've been thinking about it too, but then yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like, I just, I love knowing that in three weeks I got to be a fucking boss or two weeks. I like five weeks. Like I just, yeah. I fucking love that. Cause then it just, I think because then my brain switches to non-negotiable stuff. Where right now I know I got out because I ain't really got nothing to be on display about other than day yeah. to day. So like, what keeps me away or makes me take that extra weight other than competition? I don't know. And I'm trying. Maybe if I was a little younger, I wouldn't like probably process it the same way. But trying to manage just how much I want to stay in the game as long as I can. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to be halfway smart. Fuck! I might just throw it out the window. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have anything? Uh, not nothing that hasn't been said. Pretty much, yeah. Like, I, it just happened to me because now I'm doing a like two events at the end of this year. So, what are you doing? Uh, in October, it's a 24 hour ruck. It's basically see how far you can go in 24 hours. Hell yeah! yeah. How far can you go, yeah. Danny? <laughs> are you gonna? Like, is, it, is, is it at a set location, or are you just doing it by miles? yourself? Uh, no. So actually, it's in a one mile loop three mile loop okay mm, so that's not as crazy the least. friend i convinced to do the hundred miles 
Okay. He did it by himself. That's fucking Shout ballsy. Out Joe. What up, Joe? Um, well, Joe's a badass. Yeah. yeah, he's a member and everything. Yeah, loves the minicast. Yeah, um, hell yeah. But uh, anyway, he uh, has done this like all. It's actually an ultra race, like a run running race in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Okay, dope. And so it's a three mile loop. He's done it like seven times. Shout out Touchdown Jesus. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> and so uh, we were just talking about it. Like, what if we just fucking ruck it? Yeah, instead? do it. So, yeah. That's what we're so, you guys just doing it by yourself? No, it's, oh, it's like it's an, an actual, actual event. event. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll, we'll be doing it together and everything. Hell, yeah. It'll be cool. Fuck, yeah. Yeah. Um, then, so, Do you track weights and try to progress on all exercises in the guest stack program? So, this is one thing that's been asked before. Like we mostly look at the conjugate method stuff and try to beat it each time. But I think you do need to be conscious of your accessories, pushing them up mildly um, each week if you can. So even in the arm workout, if you used four, the, the fucking regular bar last week, throw two and a halfs on. Like you can consciously, and that's one thing Louie wrote about is that pushing your accessory up mildly, you know, helps with your GPP and just your overall strength. So I think that is something to be conscious of. You'll never catch me with a binder filling out numbers. I'm not saying I'm like, you shouldn't do that. That's just not my style. My brain just doesn't work that way. And I can pretty much for the most part, remember the main lifts of what I made or, and the other thing is I've weighed so many different weights, no gear, gear, like from a standpoint of powerlifting equipment. Like, so like I have like a million different maxes. And so I kind of know where I'm at, but like most people probably forget things. So if you, that helps you. But also being on your phone in the gym, tracking everything is a little bit whack to me, but you know, whatever can make you make sure that you're improving. So, yeah, that's, a, but I'm most of the guys probably just do for the main conjugate lifts. I would say. Yeah. <clears throat> Same way. Um, all right. So these are just like a quick, uh, sup supplement questions. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the best slash fastest way to shred belly fat? If the fat burner makes me feel sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna start out by saying if you're taking four pills of the fat burner, just not just dose it down. Yeah, like because it that. fucking is strong. awesome. It's like one of my favorite fucking supplements. Fuck yeah, we need to clip that for yeah. facts. Effort. Facts. Yeah. I take it before I take it before my workout. Yeah. It fucking gets me rocking. Yeah, yeah. It's the mental capacity on that too, or the mental focus is off, which is yeah. where we got a lot of the ideas for Brain Master at. Shout out Brain Master. If you want to feel that way, but not as much caffeine, Brain Master is there too. That's facts. I like it. Um. I think two, definitely dose down. And second, let, this I'm just going to be straight with you. It takes way longer than you think it does. Like fucking losing your body fat on your abs takes way fucking longer than you think it does. And it never happens fast enough. And that's why abs are so revered in our, in our like society, because it's, unless you're born with them, it displays. And even if you're born with them to keep them, ultimate discipline because it is like you're walking around going hey i'm either born with these or i eat really fucking good and i train my ass off because you got to do it all mm -hmm. like that's the thing like so just know that if you never had abs before i was skinny kind of fat in the first time i wanted to get abs because i went from 200 down to 170 or 165 for my first modeling shit in new york it took me like six months and i was a fucking animal because I wanted to be in New York. I thought it was going to be on fucking Abercrombie shit. So like I did a hundred, 200 wheels a day, weighted crunches, fucking an hour of cardio, never miss my meals. Like I was a fucking beast and it took me six months. So when you hear me talk like that, are you putting in work like that? And if you are, then no, you just got to keep it up. And if you aren't, you better get your shit together and that, then you'll get abs. Yeah. Takes a while. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah lunch. Lunch. Yeah. Alternative protein to the protein powder with uh, the spike due to allergies. Uh, plant protein. Plant protein's fire. Yeah, it's really good. Slept on. Slept on. The other thing about the plant protein is I tried to find, when I was creating it with the science team over at the manufacturer, find the two things that were the most natural to make it taste good without, like, you know, having the availability to sucralose. So it's like chocolate is a natural thing that tastes good, cocoa powder, and peanut butter, mm -hmm. peanuts, is a natural thing that makes it. So not only did, does the protein, the plant protein, like far, it's far superior than any other plant pea isolates that I've seen on the market, but the mixability and taste is really, really good. And I don't even like that type of protein, mm -hmm. but I created it. So even if our people from our normal protein buyers would flip over, 
they would enjoy it. Yeah. Nicole Susak's one of them. For my uh, for my spike, uh, me and Michaela make the plant protein. We do all we do almond milk, uh, plant protein powder. Uh, fucking the frozen like strawberry banana shit, mm-hmm. and then scoop of peanut butter. Hell yeah! Fucking blend it up. There you fire. go. What? Clip that too, fucking Kyle. It's wet. fucking good. Um, <laughs> all right, here. All right, this last question will end it on a good note. Mm. Um, does anyone ever actually eat the sweet potato skin? Mm. I do. Do you? Fuck yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I have. No. I mean, I, I like cut it up. I don't like peel the skin off though. So yeah. So I you do it. eat yeah, the I skin. Eat it. Yeah. Uh-huh. I so feel like you, that's where like the dogs, like the nutrients are in there. <laughs> it's I, like eating the bark. Yeah. You well, know? I just like dice it up and then like throw it in the oven. Like, yeah. I don't even, and then like I don't even like notice. Yeah, because yeah. you're eating like a fry almost. Yeah. Kind of because you're baking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. It's well, like maybe I need to get shit, maybe yeah. I need to get my shit. Maybe my testosterone is like if I eat the skin. Don't, yeah, don't it's like the hidden nutrients. Yeah. In there, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love how people are saying that on the fucking blog. What? Wait, hold on, let's read. Let's read this comment. From what is last it? Night. What are they saying? Danny hold wrote. On, hold on. Danny sent me this comment from the blog. It's amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, this is Miguel Miguel Reyes put this on his daily his last daily fire. Okay. Said, "Damn, got to the gym on time today, but was definitely a bitch ass hoe before I got here." Tomorrow will be a different story. Hashtag I ain't no ho. <laughs> <laughs> Roundtable podcast. I'm yeah. your boy Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susack. Brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Don't be a bitch ass ho. We out. <laughs>